So, the next tool we're going to introduce here, well, I, I hope it's not an introduction, you should have this, uh, in your, you should have it in your uh, microeconomics class, but it is production possibility frontier. Look, in production possibility frontier, basically, Q have this definition, is, uh, represents all possible combinations of efficient production, given the available factors of production and state of the technology. Look, what's it, what, what does it mean? Is that this production possibility frontier uh, tells us how much uh, of two goods we can make assuming that we are using the entire labor that we've got, right? So, if we've got, uh, if we now have labor and we want to create this production possibility frontier, first we, we need to assume that we have some amount of workers. And look, this is what we do in this table that you see over here. Uh, we are assuming that the European Union has 200 units of labor and Kenya has 120 units of labor. Now, having those, we can actually calculate how much uh, food and chemicals at most we can produce. So, if you would be producing just food, it would be 100. If just chemicals, 25. And the same for Kenya, 30. How do we obtain those numbers? Well, actually, it is really easy. But we're going to do this very slowly and we're going to write it down algebraically. Again, as you'll see, understanding this now will make everything later very accessible. Okay, and let's get back to one of our assumptions that we have. Cost and returns to scale. We have cost and returns to scale. We have just one factor of production labor. So, this implies that our production possibility frontier, in this particular case, is just a flat line. So, it's a straight line. So, how would we write it? Look, I'm going to write this for just EU, and please try to do the same thing for Kenya, which is very simple, once you know how to go about it. Okay, so, look, this is total labor in EU. Now, this total labor can be divided into two, two, the production of two possible goods. First one is that we can take, uh, we can take this labor to produce a good, first good, Right? This is quantity of food. And we can also use it for production of chemicals. Now, how much labor are we going to use for production of, uh, of food? Well, it depends how many units of food we want to produce. And how many people does it take, how many units of labor does it take to produce one unit of food? And this information, we simply get from the labor requirement. Yeah. Okay, here we should also add subscript EU, but I'm not going to do it to make things simple. Okay, and then we see that the rest, so level of production, uh, so production, uh, that is going to be uh, uh, so the amount of labor going to uh, production of chemicals depends on how many chemicals we want to produce times how many units of labor it requires to produce one unit of chemicals. And look, now we can actually calculate 
all the, those two values. Because if QC is equal to zero, then in order to find out how much food will be produced at most, we are simply assuming that this expression disappears, right? Because it's zero. And we can then transform this by dividing by requ labor requirement. And this is TL, oh, I'm sorry, TLEU divided by AEUF. So this is 200 divided by 2 is 100. And this is why I will get this 100 unit. And now if we do the same thing, uh, if we do the same thing for uh, for food, so now we are assuming we are not producing food, we will be able to get maximum amount of chemicals we can get, which is T at E so total labor in your opinion divided by labor requirement for chemicals, which will give us uh, 200 uh, divided by 8 which is uh, 25 Okay, but look, if this is actually the uh, no. So what do we have? We have two points So now in these two points we can already draw the line But if we have the formula for the line Maybe we can say a little bit more of it And look, what I want to propose is to solve this equation for QF. Okay, so first, I'm putting AQF on one hand side, I'm subtracting this from both hand sides, and I'm obtaining A E U F Q F equals to negative A C E U G C plus T L E. Okay, now let's make it into another equation. Let's divide both sides by A E U F. So by labor requirement in the European Union and to produce one unit of food. And we get that this is Q F equals to negative A C E U. Divided by A, E, U, F, C plus T, L, E, U, divided by A, E, U, F. And look, what you see over here is nothing more than a linear function. Over here you have Y, here you have coefficient A, here is the X plus B. It just looks more complicated. Now, if I'm going to calculate the derivative of y with respect to x, or the derivative of qf with respect to qc, how much I'm going to get? Hmm, I'm getting simply this. Oh, this is a straight line. Right? So, a c e u a E U F. Have we seen this expression somehow? Somewhere? Okay, maybe let's substitute to know how it is. We remember that labor requirements for chemicals was 8, for food 2. This is negative 4. We definitely see it somewhere. Well, of course, look, if you disregard the minus, this is the opportunity cost. And look, it makes perfect sense actually that it has a minus here. Because look, out of this we get that if I want to produce one additional unit, uh, one additional unit of chemicals in the European uh, 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 in Europe. I 
in your opinion, I will have to give up four units of food. And look, we can make exactly the same calculations for Kenya, and please do that at home. And you, we will obtain uh, the entire production possibility for tea. Okay, so how do we draw it? Okay, so look, the graph I'm going to prepare is not perfect. It's definitely far from perfect. Uh, but I'm going to try to make things uh, just say, look better than you know intact with units because it would be very hard to do so. Okay, let's start with. So here we have chemicals, here we have food. Okay, so we know that at most EU can produce 100 units of food or 25 units of chemicals. Right? We calculate this. And look, by the same token, if we go, we go through the same calculations, um, you know what? I'm going to do it with this um, color. Uh, let's just say that this is the EU. EU is the yellow. And uh, let's just say that Kenya is going to be uh, purple. I think so. Okay, so this is. Kenya can produce at most 30 units of food and. Theory. We want to be at the 
at the line. But of course, exact position depends on preferences. So for now, there is not much uh, we can say. Uh, we can say about it. Okay, now that we uh, now the location of this curve uh, and the further elaboration actually requires us to make one additional assumption. Uh, this additional assumption sorry, is this. This additional assumption is very simple. Both countries want to consume at least some of both goods. Okay. So, uh, look, what am I, uh, uh, what, what do I mean by that? Uh, in case, uh, in case of EU, we know that the slope of this line is negative 4. The 4 is opportunity cost of uh, producing one more unit of chemicals and uh, in terms of food. So look, in this case scenario, uh, uh, in this case scenario, if the price of chemicals would be more than four units of food, what would this imply for the entire economy of EU? In this case, it would be way more profitable to produce food, I'm sorry, chemicals, uh, and food than chemicals. Um, uh, 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 oh, I'm sorry. If the price of chemicals in terms of food would be higher than for, let's just say, five units of food, it would be more profitable to produce food than chemicals. Everyone would like to produce food. If the price of chemicals would be below four, like three, it would mean that it's better, it's more profitable to produce, uh, more pro uh, profitable to produce uh, 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 food, there would be no chemicals. So, the only, the, both of these notions are against our additional assumption so we disregarded them. And look, this means that in this economy, the price of chemicals in terms of food must be equal to exactly four, just as in Kenya, it must be exactly six. But look, those prices are so-called alternative prices. What is alternative? Autarchy basically is, a, is an economy that do not trade with, with any other economy. In most cases, like you can think about it to some extent as North Korea, but even this is not fully, uh, fully true because there is some trade. Like imagine that this is actually what would happen in those economies if there would be no trade with all other countries whatsoever. Okay, so, look, we've built up everything, everything we need. We've got all the tools. Now, we know what happens in the closed economies. In the next video, we will open them and we will see how the trade between the two countries can proceed. Okay, see you in the next video.